Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to of course some more automation and BeamNG Drive. Today obviously we are creating our very own pickup truck, this is going to be a modern pickup truck similar to I think it's called the uh, Maven Phaeton, uh, which is a pickup truck I made before. This is a full on body and frape American kind of style, American design. A little bit sporty looks, but this is going to be a non-sporty model. Uh, still going to have quite a bit of power. This is something for like light duty use, like the top end of light duty use. So uh, similar in performance and specs to a F-150, probably with a 3.5 twin turbo V6, or a Dodge Ram with like a, a Hemi or a Chevy 1500 Silverado or a GMC Sierra. So it's going to be a full-size American pickup truck. This is going to be a four-door vehicle. I'm not really a fan at all of how four-door pickup trucks look, but we're making one because that's what that's what companies have. Companies don't just have a two-door pickup truck. Come on. Uh, partial aluminum raking sure 2020 year ladder chassis like every pickup truck should be. Uh, AHS steel, we're trying to lose some weight. We're definitely a pickup truck on a diet. Front mounted longitudinal engine like any good pickup truck. Front is going to be uh, a little bit more advanced than before. I think before, I'm not sure what I had for suspension. But this is going to be double wishbone front, so it's not uh, a fully crazy off-road truck. This is like a, a light-duty, uh, full-size truck. This is not meant for, you know, um, going off-roading, things like that. This is, this is a truck for the street here. It's still going to have, I'm thinking leaps or coils for the back. I think coils are just, I think they're just for coils, eh? Just for coils, uh, just in the rear. Something still a bit off-roady, a bit more uh, durable if you want and stuff. You handle a lot of weight, yada, yada, yada. Uh, making a whole new engine altogether here. Family, this is like 210 engine, uh, and I, I have, of course, purged my engines before. This is going to be a 90, oh, a 60 degree V6 or a 90 degree V6? Doesn't really matter. Or should I do inline 6? Should I bring back the inline 6? now? it's going to be a V6. Uh, I think I had a 5, or I think we had like an 8.2 liter V. This is going to be a rather large V6, I'm thinking. Uh, probably twin turbo, because it's got to be twin turbo. Of course, turbos aren't a thousand percent in this game, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm not making a perfect car. I know that. Over delivered cam, four valve, all aluminum, and we're gonna make the uh, a little bigger of a stroke, a little bigger of a bore as well. Uh, just a high three liter, I think a three point eight liter wind turbo V six. We're trying to one up the F one fifty, of course, right? This is a better EcoBoost. I don't want VVL though, because once VVL, it just adds weight and it's not not crazy useful for this. We're gonna lower the compression down to nine to one to start. VVT all cams, please. Turbochargers thing. I'm gonna set it to about. 400 horsepower. We'll tune that in a second. Direct injection. Uh, like, do we do we even need regular premium? This is a turbocharged engine. This is gonna run premium. Uh, we need an exhaust, obviously. We're gonna go for a three-way reverse flow. Reversal is pretty good exhaust. And I'll probably need a bypass valve here. So we're looking right now 23% efficiency, which is pretty pretty good for a utilitarian engine. Although we're not making much power, and we're only using 88 over 90, 95 octane, so we're not using all of our octane at all. Uh, reliable, or emissions, that's not reliability. Emissions is pretty low, 57 or very low, and reliability is pretty high, uh, around 77 right now. So a pretty good engine. Dual exhaust is probably what we want in a bigger exhaust system too. I'm going to tune this because I haven't tuned it. Uh, we'll set it to fuel economy. It's usually where I set my tunes, and then I go from there because obviously I want to make torque down low if I can. Uh, we're just increase boost just to get a bit more of those torques. We're going to put 29, a nice and high 29, lower that down. Now we're not going to get crazy, actually. 21% efficiency is not terrible. Making 375 torque and at 223 horsepower, so a bit on the low side. Like, could we make use of... We don't necessarily need per cylinder. I think, like, single's probably fine. This is this is a pretty standard, run-of-the-mill direct injection, uh, I guess, pickup truck. There's not too many direct injection pickup truck. Uh, Destruction, destruction. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, so we're gonna uh, we've got a few octanes to play with here. We we got a few things to do here. We are going to go for a low friction cast first of I think uh, can't handle the torque though, but that's okay. We'll, we'll still like this for now. I will play around with that in a second here. We're gonna actually go to the rest of the car and just tune it. Then I'll go back to the engine. Uh, a four door pickup truck. Once it loads, come on, come on, automation. Don't you fail me now? It's taking long. Oh my gosh. Wait. Four door, okay, we got, we got four doors now. I'm not sure if I actually like how uh, The front end looks like it. the cab is too far forward in my opinion, but that's okay. We can fix that a second here. Uh, and we can eliminate the box just to here as well. So it is a pretty decent sized pickup truck. I guess this is more like a, um, like a small half doors probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks best like that. I don't think I like how it looks like this. It, likes, it looks good like that. It looks fine, like it looks almost like there's no door there, which is kind of weird, but that's okay. Then we'll do 
Now, we're, we're going to do four full-size seats, I'm thinking, a little bit smaller. Small back seats, we can't actually move that back and forth, which kind of sucks. It's going to be a 4x4 vehicle, uh, advanced automatic, 9-speed automatic, uh, open diff. We don't, need a, we don't need a locking diff. I might change that, though. Uh, medium compound tires, or maybe hard long life. We're going to make them quite large, though. Like, the high 200s, we're making 275 front and 275 rear. Nice standard sizes front and rear. Uh, of course, we need massive tires. This is this is going to be in the premium kind of segment. This is going to be a pretty uh, pretty upper end pickup truck, I want to say. 33 and a half tire diameter uh, and 20 inch wheels. We can go slightly bigger, probably slightly bigger wheels. Okay, there we go. That's a good, that's a good starting point. And just do a little bit of uh, rim offset there, make them stick up just a bit. We're making ourselves a pretty, pretty meaty little street truck here. Steel wheels or alloy? Steel wheels, this is a pickup truck. Solid discs, four pistons, max size for now. I will change that because it's a little big for this thing. Fully clad and cooling flaps, which will help with the fuel economy just a bit. And it's going to be a five-seater standard or premium. This is going to be a little bit of uh, the, you know, the upper echelon for pickup trucks. So on the middle, a bit on the high end here, this is... Um, probably going to be around a $60,000, $70,000 pickup truck, this is oh, $60,000, I'm thinking Canadian, so probably $60,000 American pickup truck, uh, premium and standard I think for infotainment, so premium interior, nice leather, nice little leather seats there, uh, electric, electric power steering, yeah, full assist there for the people, nice and easy for, uh, for your average American pickup truck driver to use, uh, we'll use probably, like, uh, another, another in the air, Comfort or just standard progressive. I think we're gonna go for progressive, then we'll go just semi-active and active. Just just a decently okay suspension system. So far we're getting a whopping 8.6 miles per gallon, which is just awful. Obviously, it's just awful. The engine's not tuned, nothing's tuned at all. I'm only doing 145k that we're gonna tune us up to about 180k and lower this down to 180k. This is a street vehicle. We don't need anything higher than 180 clicks, which is what uh 19 miles per gallon on average. We're getting there now. That's getting there, and that is with Standards can go vented and vented, and we actually can make the rear smaller and the front just a bit smaller. 15 inches, please. And the rear bit smaller, and we can actually change it. Okay, 20 miles per gallon average. We're hitting 50, 100 pounds. So we are a bit on the chunky side for a, uh, a you know a pickup truck. I think it's just a, bit, a little bit on the chunky side. We got to go on a slight diet, though. We'll get to that in a second. We'll keep going for the engine here. Uh, we are on, yes, low friction cast. If we go just to regular cast, we're going to drop down to 18, so we're losing 2 MPG, but we're also gaining reliability. It's going to be a more reliable engine, but we do still have octane to burn. We do still have some octane. Now, we can change this thing to rev just a bit higher. We could probably go like a light forge. 7,000 RPM seems like the top of the line for this thing. We don't need to go any higher than that. We're 21% efficiency. Uh, of course, we're still extremely underpowered, but uh, we have yet to tune the turbos properly. Increase the camper pod to probably 50. Uh, even though the horsepower kind of just, like, it's stagnates, that's fine. It's a, it's a very flat horsepower curve, which I like. Uh, the problem is it's not enough horsepower. Now, we can play around with the air ratio. Increase the air ratio. We're going to get more horsepower and torque. Of course, burning up more of our octane and making the torque usually later. So, 420 torque is a very healthy tor uh, torque number. Horsepower is just lagging. We actually can go back to higher max boost now. We, we don't need it. Well, well, we'll leave it up here for now. Uh, I will put it down in a second, though. We'll go air ratio. Just keep going a bit higher here. 3200 RPM is not terrible. We could go and increase the pressure. Oh, it doesn't like that at all. Wow, we're using our octane so quickly here. Um, we can go for a higher cam profile, which is going to help a bit with knocking. Also make our horsepower, or more horsepower, and later we can get just about at 7,000 RPM. 420 to horse and 304 torque. Using all of our octane now. Who doesn't like that at all? Uh, if we go to a slightly higher fuel mixture. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to try to lighten this thing just a bit. This thing is... We're under budget right now. We're, we weigh more, but we are under budget. We can probably go for like an LSD if we wanted to. I don't know. It, we don't need that. I'm just talking extras here. So back to the engine. Come on, give me the engine. So we are a V engine, of course. Perfectly, the perfect engine. Just just a V. Not a V6, just a V. Uh, 314 horse, which seems kind of similar to a uh, EcoBoost 3.5 twin turbo. We want to get a bit more. I want high 300s and whatever torque we can actually muster after that. We can probably use a bigger exhaust too. We are struggling on the exhaust side of things. 
fuel system stuff because we'll actually get some more octane. Uh, I don't want to increase the top end because it's just going to make our power go to the peak our payment. I, I don't want this, this vehicle to rev any higher. 21% efficiency, which we can then lower the cam profile just a bit and get a bit more efficiency out of there. Even though we're losing torque. 488 torque. Actually, I want to get... 490 torque. Oof. No. I just like odd numbers. Okay. 488 pound feet of torque, which is fine. 364 horse, 22% efficiency, which is all in all not terrible. Uh, 18 miles per gallon, which all in all isn't terrible. It's a little bit lower than what I wanted, but we are running quite large tires. 275 millimeter front and rear. Uh, so some pretty big meaty tires. It's 50, 56,000. We've got a little bit of money to play with. We can go to the engine just a bit more. A little bit of a more advanced engine we could do. Or we can do better transmission. Okay. A little help as well with everything in general. Uh, 62,000, 59, you know, $59,000, 2012 dollar pickup trucks, which equivalents to a, you know, a, a better amount probably, I'm thinking, I'm not too sure, this is $2012, by the way, guys, if you guys, you know, wondering how the money works here, so, I think the basics of the truck are done, what we're gonna do now, like I always do, I'm going to design the car, do a bit of tweaking here and there, in a time lapse, of course, I'm gonna talk about the time lapse and everything that's happening in the video while I'm doing it, uh, and then we're going to just, you know, talk about the car some more and then drive it around in b g Drive. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, guys, so we are designing our 2020 pickup truck of all of, of course, like always, I do start off with the front of the vehicle. Starting off with a very similar headlight design to my Maven RMX sports car from 2020, which is, this is going to be the same brand. Uh, this is going to be the Maven Phaeton, and then whatever trim level I decide on later on. Uh, the grille is quite similar to the Maven RMX, but this is also similar to the old Maven pickup truck I made, which is again another Maven Phaeton, except this was uh, the Menace version, so a high performance version. This is going to be a more of a premium kind of thing, so you can see here the front end's got a long Volvo S grille, almost like an E-shaped headlights, uh, similar-ish to a Volvo Ford-ish design. Uh, it's all like one piece design headlights, and at the bottom we have another set of headlights as well, uh, with some very, very square grills. And I'm just trying to work out how exactly I want to design the bottom end. I don't want to make it too full, uh, so I do end up putting quite a few layers and levels of grills, trim pieces, uh, etc. But I do end up taking away a few of them just because it, it is a bit cluttered and it is a bit intense. This is not a high performance vehicle. I mean, it's fairly high performance. It's got quite a bit of horsepower and torque around 300 and whatever, but it, it will be changed later on. So I had these sort of uh, angled bars along the sides of the hood. Uh, just to give it a bit more depth and design here. I've been just looking around the vehicle in general, seeing what I want to name it. So it is called the Phaeton XTL. So XT uh, for extra truck and L for luxury. Sure, why not? Uh, now I'm working on some sort of side piece uh, trim where I'm going to put some writing and I'm just playing around with the engine as well. I do end up getting 385 horsepower, I think, right now uh, and around 400 or high 400s of torque, maybe 500 torque, I think I'm at. Um, so I do add an XTL badge, nice and big, and just make it sure it's the same on both sides. And I fixed the the door uh, kind of separation from both doors because they are very, very close in this car. I had a sunroof and some roof design. Going to the side of the vehicle, I have added the door handles and some bottom trim, some side steps, and of course the gas cap. And then the rear, which is a pretty difficult part for this pickup truck because like the whole truck is a pretty modern design, but the, the back is a bit different. Uh, it's a little bit older style, so I do add some uh, pretty modern headlights or taillights after playing with the colors just for a bit. And end up on this nice and beautiful green, very, very aggressive looking for a not a performance pickup truck, but this is a kind of a luxury pickup truck with a flair, right? Maven is all is always known for being a bit sporty, and this truck is no different. Uh, so the back is pretty much finished having a quad exhaust tip, uh, having some trim pieces, etc. I just gotta figure out what to do with the very, very top and add some space into that. I do end up on having uh, the Maven badge with Faden underneath it instead of having the actual Maven crest, then add a 4x4 sticker on the side, adding some turn signals and a third brake light on the roof. I'm basically just doing some final touches to the vehicle uh, and then changing the green color to one last time. So in front of us we have completed the 2020 Maven Phaeton XTL. Okay guys, so you just saw the design video for the Maven Phaeton XTL. Now we're going to go over a few specifics of the vehicle before we jump into Beeman G Drive. 
First off, again, it does follow a very similar design language to my Maven RMX and the previous Maven Fate and pickup truck uh, from like the mid late 2000s, I think it was. Uh, this is a modern version with similar style headlights uh, and then a bit of, um, you know, a slightly different grille, basically. But very, very similar overall to both the RMX and the old Maven Phaeton. Uh, looking at the bottom, it is a bit different than both the cars. It has the Maven sort of modern uh, headlight with a bar going across here. We have a really unique kind of black angled bar here going through the grill. I like that a lot. And then we have basically a just very squared off thing just to uh, make the car look a bit more muscular. And then towards the edges, so it's a straight line up to the headlights. So we follow the line here. Goes to the headlights. It's not perfect, obviously, to the headlights. But, you know, it's a pickup truck. It's not meant to be super beautiful. You can't make a pickup truck absolutely beautiful. I mean, you probably can, but I can't. Um, with the Maven crest right here, we have some little accent pieces there. The XTL sort of badging deckling thing we have going on. Uh, just a normal normal mirror. Ooh, these red these red, uh, these red calipers. Not really a fan of those. I didn't mean to have that. We're just going to change it to uh, gray. That sounds fine. Uh, so pretty, you know, fine looking modern rims. Oh, maybe I'm not sure if the wheels are a little bit too big. Maybe just a tiny bit too big, but that's okay. Going to the side here, so, so we do have a black trim piece with a turn signal there and then a side step that would retract hopefully. This is a kind of a luxury vehicle, costing around the same price as a modern uh, 2020 GMC uh, 1500 Denali, or Denali, yes, GMC Sierra Denali. It's like the top of line Sierra basically, pickup truck or like a Ford F-150, the top of line model basically besides the Raptor. Uh, this is not a high performance model even though it actually has pretty astounding performance. Sunroof for the top of course and then some... I guess, uh, like rails to mount stuff on the roof. 4x4 four four badges on both sides. Just add a bit of design to the side here. Uh, at the back, this is where it's... I don't know if I dig it 100%, but it's 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 there. Uh, I really like the taillight design and this turn signal. I like how this all works together pretty good. This is a pretty good use of the space. I think it could be a bit better. Maven Fate and we have all spelled out there. I think there's too much letter cluttering. I wish they had more fonts and I wish you could actually change the color of the fonts. Uh, if you can, then maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. Basically, it's not really a grill, there's more of a design accent down here, license plate, of course, we have a quad exhaust. This is a luxury vehicle. If you actually look at a lot of modern uh, exhaust trucks and SUVs, like the brand new GMC, uh, Yukon, etc., they do have quad exhaust tips for whatever reason. It looks really awesome, but uh, they have that there. That's why I have it there. I did change a few things, so starting with the engine, we are making 385 horsepower now and 520 pound-feet of torque. And what I did to get that is just increase some quality sliders, uh, tinkered out the VVL profile, uh, I think we added the VVL, and we have all four internals, which is not 100% realistic, but this is this is the top of the line engine for trucks and whatnot, even though I could have used my, my Maven uh, RMX V8, that's more of a high-strung V8, where this is a... Uh, you know, makes, makes torque a lot lower, 3200 RPM for peak torque, 520 pound-feet, which is quite a bit of torque for pickup truck. This actually would be uh, the highest torque in its class of any pickup truck with its class, which is pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure highest torque. If I'm wrong, that's okay, but it's definitely up there for torque. Horsepower is pretty much up there, around the same as a EcoBoost Twin Turbo V6, if not a little bit more. Weight distribution is actually 5941, pretty good. Uh, a bit of a heavy boy. 5,400 pounds, so a little bit heavy. We are using a bigger body though than the uh, the previous generation Thetan, which was a bit, which is about 400 pounds less. Uh, and this is a a uh, four-door versus a two-door. It's got more seats, etc. Um, overall, it's just a bigger, better vehicle. Nine-speed automatic instead of like a six-speed manual too. So it does get 19 miles per gallon average, which is actually surprisingly better than an F-150 or a uh, GMC Sierra. They get about, I think the average was 16, no, 16, 17, I think it was 18. I think it was 18 average actually, 17 or 18 average. So we're getting 19 average. So we're actually above them for average, which is kind of astounding. In a good way though, I like that. We did change it to a electric LSD. I played the spacing just a bit. So um, our top speed is geared really, really, really aggressively for fuel economy. And of course, this thing is not going for the best 0 60. It's actually getting 6.7060, which is overall a very very good 0 to 60 for a pickup truck in general uh competing similarly with a ford raptor which is the low, i think the low sixes or the high fives so um one second off 0 to 60 from ford raptor is quite impressive uh although we have a bit less horsepower and i think a bit more torque actually though uh, the wheels are staying as steel hard long life not even a sports compound tire uh we are going to take this thing and bmg drive and do some towing and stuff so that's why there's no you know it's it's not meant for uh being a performance truck overall I am extremely happy with how this thing turned out. I like the color. Um, I'm not sure if it fits for a non-performance vehicle, but then again, Maven always likes to, you know, have a have a flair to their vehicles, a little bit of theatrical flair. 
little bit of nice design flair. Overall, I love this pickup truck. I love the previous one I actually made, so make sure to check that one out if you haven't after. Um, so I guess now we're going to jump into BeamNG Drive and see how this thing drives for one and see if it can tow for two. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in one sec. Okay guys, so we're finally in BeamNG Drive. This is the Maven Phaeton XTL. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some towing tests. Uh, I did this before with, I think it was the uh, Maven, I think it was called like the XT or something like that. It was, an, it was a pickup truck from the 1980s. Uh, we're using a modern pickup truck this time, so it's going to be a lot lot better at towing probably. Uh, we're towing a, pick, a, a massive full-size bus behind this weighing about 12,000 kilograms. I think it's about 25 or 26,000 pounds or so. Uh, so a pretty heavy thing. This thing is definitely not ready to tow that much, but we're going to tow it anyway. So first things first. Um, I'll show you guys both cars are like are, are, are good this bus right here is off it's in neutral it's off uh there's no parking brake on nothing's on and our truck is just uh, no traction control regular high range gearbox we're just put in the drive and just accelerate wow That's, uh, that took way less effort than i thought i'm not even on like barely on a throttle at all actually i can actually give a throttle doesn't like it as much it's definitely going a little a little lopsided that's okay that's okay <laughs> oh gosh Okay, so this, this, is, this is a pretty impressive tow, actually. Make sure you look at it here. We can't get, we can't get any better looks than this. <laughs> like, just imagine that sight. Looks perfect. This is fine. This is fine. Oh, no, this is fine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, at this point, so, oh, wow, a nice pop and crackle there. The bus is just pull, pulling us now. Let me break. Oh, boy. We're giving her its all right now. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> the tire just off the ground. Oh wait, come on. Oh, almost there. Wow, that was awful. That braking test was uh, not great at all. So what we're gonna do now? I'm, I'm gonna touch a couple buses. I just want to see how much this thing can pull at all. I think a pull five buses is great. And then after that, we're gonna take it for like a track test or something. Uh, I'm gonna get a few more buses on here. Let's see if we can pull that because I, I want a challenge for it. All right, so let's check it and see. Okay guys, so now we do have a few buses, we just have three uh, Zebra buses, Zebra Tour buses, they're each about 12,250 kilograms. So uh, yeah, the total is around 37, 37 and a half thousand kilograms, uh, which, is, which is a lot. It's definitely more weight than a vehicle should be able to pull at all. You can see here the back already is, um, it's not happy, I mean it, it is connected just with like the connectors in the game, so that's probably why it's not happy, but... We're going to try anyways to try to pull it. Uh, we're going to do it in high reach at first. We'll see if we can pull it in that. Okay. Wow, this is this is, this is is still too easy. Um, not even full throttle. If we're easy in the throttle, it's it's good to it. We're going to actually fix this connector here. Let's let's fix this. Turn this car. Oh, no. I don't want that to happen. Oh, oh gosh. Let's just turn this car around over here. Nope, we don't need that where we're going. What's this do? <laughs> Why was it floating? Okay, that's fine. This is fine. I think it's a pretty successful tour. So I think what we're gonna do now is just take it for a quick off-road course in the um, in, in this map here, and then we'll actually take it into actually. You know, I think we'll just take it into another Beam and G Drive map and see if this thing can actually go off-road at all. Um, because it's sort of off-road capable. It's got hard, long life tires, so not off-road tires. It's got okay ground, uh, you know, ground clearance, good enough power, uh, and it's got you know high low range. So yeah, we'll see. Okay guys, so this is the East Coast Off-Road map. I think this is the Off-Road Course 1 on the East Coast map. Uh, and I think this is the similar map, or if not the same map, we, that Canadian Steel actually did with the Off-Road Challenge. Uh, we're going to take off the traction control, or the ELSC, electronic stability control. And just take this thing for a bit of a cruise here. Yeah, this is the same map, so I am not familiar with this at all. I've barely ever done any off-roading in Beam. And so far, just taking it nice and slow. We're not going for record time, obviously. I think he got three minutes with... Uh, the vehicles are sub three minutes. I'm being very gentle on the throttle here. We are driving a large vehicle, larger than larger than a vehicle that should be on this track, of course. And I've never really driven on this course myself, so I'm not too sure. The sport mode really likes to hold those gears. Oh boy, that was a that was a bottom out. Oh, we're fine. Everything's cool. I love the force feedback. It's it's really fighting me the whole time. Oh boy, no. Okay, we're breaking. Brakes are not terrible. Uh, like, like for, for a full-size pickup action truck, they're, they're probably fine, if not good. Oh, that was a perfect smash in the front end there. But, um, for any sort of vehicle, for doing what this is doing, yeah, they're not great. 
And uh, I, I regret putting on these uh, step, like the uh, the steps on the side because it's definitely uh, screwing over my ground clearance. Oh, 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 we've already lost the rear buffer. Oh, perfect. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. We're going, we're going right, not le not left. I don't know why I went left. This is my first from ever on this guy. So if we if we succeed here, fine. This is this is it. You know, this is the one. Feel it. We'll just keep it in first and second for now. Oh, almost hit that rock. It did it pretty well. Definitely not an off-road vehicle. I should make an off-road. I should make like a, a rally, a Baja variant of this. Like you know, you got the uh, the Ford Bronco. I think they did the Baja one for that before the next generation Broncos coming out in a few years. And of course, you got the Ford Raptor, which is definitely meant for the sand dunes. That we should make a brand new Maven Menace, I think, or a Maven Faden Menace. Oh, I look at this. It's not gonna be fun. Oh, the brakes are not good. Oh, boy. Oh, this is getting real interesting now. This is very terrifying. Be a little wide there. Doesn't have to rev that much. We're making peak torque around here, though, so... Uh, no problem getting up the hills. We're at around four minutes. It's definitely worse than lots of the off-road cars. Uh, if, if I just gave it the whole time and, you know, didn't let off the throttle, then I think we could set a pretty respectable time. Definitely sub three minutes, I'm thinking. Or around three minutes at least, but uh, not 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 uh, under too much lower than that actually. Yeah, I'm on. Oh boy. There we go. Four minutes, twenty-one seconds, and uh, forty-four. Wow. Uh, yeah, not not a great time, honestly. We're just gonna go free room now for a second here. The exhaust just pops for a second. That's cool. Uh, so the front end overall damage, not bad damage at all. Not bad damage at all. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the vehicle. It definitely drives like a pickup truck. Uh, and it looks like one too. So uh, yeah, I think that's everything for this video. Um, I do want to do a WRC version of my uh, a modern com like a modern subcombat WRC. I want to do a modern crossover. I wanted some classic cars as well. That's definitely on my list to go back to some more classic cars. I want to continue my fastest car in the World Series because I do want to do a uh, early 2000s one, Bugatti Veyron. Uh, I want to do a 2021, so a Koenigsegg Azure RS beater, basically, um, at some point. Uh, once the turbo revamp comes, I'll beat both those cars because uh, beating the Bugatti Sharon with like a V16 is is doable. It's just the engine overheats all the time. Uh, when we're getting to like the 1600 horsepower, 1200 horsepower stuff for the Veyron stuff, uh, it doesn't like that at all. Um, but I still want to beat like the fastest car of like the 1980s, I think. So probably maybe like a Ferrari. I think Ferrari F40 competitor, I think was 1980s or something like that. Um, fastest car of the 40s, etc. So yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time.